I like to repeat that we live in a very complex world. Very often we struggle to understand decisions that have a real impact on our lives. Why does the price of gas suddenly raise by five cents? A large company that makes profits still lay off 5,000 employees or one drug is covered by an insurance healthcare and not another one? Most often we don't know for sure, we don't know. And those decisions are usually uh, made by faceless managers and corporations that are sometimes disconnected from our reality. No wonder we seem to be attracted these days by some sort of champions that would, uh, champions who would hold simple discourse and present easy solutions to all our problems. In exchange of our votes, they claim they will defend us and shake up the system and sometimes we even believe there are three simple uh, steps planned to save us all. And when elected, they come back to us and says, who knew running a government was so difficult? Like, no, really, you don't say. <laughs> and I don't want to disappoint you, but church people are really no better. We can also be seduced by shortcuts. How many times have we heard congregations saying, you know, to attract the younger families we desperately need to save our church, we need to call a young minister. Would you believe it is such a great idea if banks were telling us to attract younger family, we solely attract young bankers? <laughs> in the same way as I'm recording this, this is the first Sunday in Lent, um, probably you have been asked, what are you giving up this year? Chocolate, coffee, smoking. And if there's nothing wrong with this, actually some of them could be good for our health. Do we really believe that a little deprivation would make a huge difference in the big cosmic order of things? You know, well, I may tell racist jokes uh, here and there, following questionable uh, business practice at the office, or occasionally lie to my spouse or my best friend, but hey, I gave up Facebook for 40 days, so I'm okay. <laughs> Sometimes we <laughs> let those shortcuts and the easy solutions distract us from the real issue to the point that we forget who we are, what are our values, and what is our call in this world. Well, take Jesus, for example. In today's reading, we, we've, in the Gospel according to Matthew, we find him in the wilderness. After 40 days and 40 nights of fast, the devil come to tempt him. And most people have this vision of uh, Jesus saying, no, no, do not tempt me to do something I would never do otherwise. Go away, Satan. But, well, we might like this idea, but if you look at the text, we discover it, it's a little more complicated. Because, you see, first Jesus is invited to turn stones into loaves of bread, not one, plural. Well, later in his ministry, we learn that Jesus took five loaves, two fish, and multiplied them to feed a very large crowd. And today, as we're constantly surrounded by poverty, we wish we can turn those stones into loaves of bread so we can feed all the poor people around us, all the hungry people around us. Not that simple. And then Jesus is asked to do something totally risk reckless and to trust God. You know, throw yourself down the temple and do not worry because God will send angels to protect you. 
as we look at Jesus' life, as Jesus' ministry on earth, we ought to acknowledge that Jesus did a lot of reckless things. <laughs> he was constantly challenging the religious and political authorities of his time, and even on his way to the cross, which was a bit reckless, he was kept trusting in God. And today in our churches, in our congregation, uh, we're sometimes asked to make bold mood to, to take chances. And what we're saying, we ought to trust in God. And finally, Jesus is brought on a very high mountain. And he's offered to rule over all the kingdoms and countries of the world. Okay, that did not happen during his lifetime. But at the end of Matthew's Gospel, we can find the Great Commissioning. All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Seems like ruling over the, all the earth. Today, if we cannot claim that everyone in every country is a Christian, I think we can assume that at least everyone have heard about Jesus and his message, and sometimes we wish our leader will pick up their Bible and read it a little more often. So you see, it's, Jesus is confronted with temptation that somehow look, might appear what happened next. And those temptations are something that is humanity from the beginning of time have been confronted with. Economics, religion, politics. And those of us who want to change and to improve this world and are sometimes wondering, why did Jesus not use all his powers to materialize this kingdom of God of his? He could have just do this and it would happen. So what's the point to be the son of God if one cannot correct what is wrong into what is right immediately? What's the point for us to believe in the Messiah who does not seem to be able to deliver on his promises? Why do we still have to wait for this realm of God promised to us more than 2,000 years ago? Well, maybe this is actually where lies the real test for Jesus and every one of us. As Jesus prepared himself for his ministry, as we are invited to prepare ourselves for, uh, to walk a path of discipleship during this time of Lent, we are reminded that the point of all of this is not to put a check on an item on the list or, or to find uh, one restriction that will absolve us from all our wrongdoings or, or boast on Twitter, uh, writing, Satan tried to tempt me with lame offer, uh, what a loser, hashtag fail. No. The test is to resist our desire for quick results, short-lived success, and total, total fulfillment of our needs at the expense of others. The real test is to resist the temptation to believe that following Jesus and the life of discipleship is an easy task governed by simplici simplicistic answers. Let's make no mistakes here. <coughs> Sorry. Discipleship is difficult. Yes, it is. We are called to be actively involved in our world. And sometimes it means to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty by, by working where nobody wants to go. Sometimes it requires to denounce our democratically elected governments or leaders who promote intolerance or two-tier justice. 
Sometimes it demands to go against popular policies and practices that still maintain injustice or iniquity in our society. Sometimes it forces us to become more aware of our choices and maybe stop consuming beloved product that arm our planet. And most often the worst part of it is that nobody will notice what we're doing. Nobody will acknowledge it. No one will erect us a status, a status uh, throw us a parrot, or give us an award or a certificate. No. Nevertheless, we will know. We will know that we have contributed maybe a little brick, but still contribute that brick to the construction of a better world. We will know that we have tried our best, gave everything we got, and kept following the call God issued to each and every one of us. In the wilderness, Jesus refused to use his power in a self-gratifying ways or to be influenced by concern of practical interests or quick results or shortcuts. And today we're called to follow in his footsteps. When it comes to economics, politics, and especially faith and spirituality, religion, we're asked to accomplish our ministries faithfully without taking shortcuts or looking for easy solution or easy way out. It might be difficult. Yes, it might be frustrating at time, but we are invited to do the right thing at the right pace for the right reasons. This is what discipleship is all about. Amen.